My name is Bahir Chitsa, part of Elite Mastermind Group. This is where we talk about success principles. Thank you for being here this morning with us. Thank Go you. ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Sure thing. So my name is Kuro. Uh, I'm tuning in from Nottingham, so in the UK. Um, currently, you say good morning. For me, it's, uh, it's 7.26. <laughs> it's always morning. The business is open. Always morning. So Not let's morning. dive into it. Let's dive into it. What's the difference between marketing and branding? Because there seems to be a lot of confusion among a lot of entrepreneurs. What is marketing? What is branding? Can you give us a little bit of a hint on that? Yeah, that's that's not a problem. So the best way to imagine this is kind of like um, branding is who you are. Marketing is how you make people know who you are, if you put it that simple. Because before you start anything, you want to make a shoe, you want to make a basketball, you want to do clothing, anything you want to do. Before you started the business, you had an idea that you want to do. So you want to be rich. You wanted that suit to be the best suit that the world has ever seen. That is your brand. Now you telling people by social media, word of mouth, um, going around to get discounts and the rest, that's marketing. So branding is basically who you are. Marketing is simply telling people. So you can imagine like going on a date. So marketing is you taking the person out to tell the person that I'm great because I think I will be the best boyfriend to a girlfriend you ever have branding is what you're telling them that i'm the best that's you but then you need to make that person know that you're the best or show them that i think this is why i am so simply put that's it branding is who you are what you represent marketing is how you tell people who you are or what you represent so how would you okay so what would be marketing 101 and branding 101 what would think let's say i i was completely clueless yeah. I just heard you for the first time saying marketing and branding. And I'm an entrepreneur. I'm trying to, I'm a single father, single mom, never mm. did business on my own. I'm just getting to the entrepreneurship. What would be a couple of tips that I could implement today? Okay. So if we start with branding one one because that's the first thing you need to do. Before you start any business, the first thing you want to be doing is defining exactly why you're doing that. Are you doing it because you want to make loads of money? Are you doing it because you're trying to solve a problem? That's one question a lot of people don't ask. They believe it works. They don't work together. If you want to make a lot of money, there's so many things you're going to sacrifice. If you want to solve a problem, there's so many things you're going to have to sacrifice. So you need to define which one you want to do. Or maybe you want to do a balance. That's fine. But you need to know exactly why you're doing it. You can't be half-assed about it. Now, if you're doing branding, first thing you're going to do is obviously you're going to sit down and say, okay, what do I want to do? I want to create something that's the best. I want to create something that's going to last forever. You need to define exactly what you want to do. Then after doing that, you need to know what people think about the idea. <clears throat> Get opinions, see other people. If you're the first person doing the business ever, fine. Then that's for you to kind of get like a general understanding of what people think. But if other people are already doing it, so say you want to, I don't know, you want to make the new pair of Jordans. Now, obviously, you see the way people buy Jordans. So you have a lot of benchmarks. You can begin to see why people buy Jordans. That's now what you're doing. You need to know why people go towards Jordan or Nike or Adidas. Get your brand idea. See how people view those brands. And then you have an idea on how to build your brand. So branding is based branding. One to one is define exactly what you want to do and how you're going to do it. And how you're going to make people know that this is the best brand, better than Jordan. That's branding one to one. Marketing one to one is then you saying, okay, I know I want people who are rich. Where are they? Are they in New Jersey? Are they in the UK? Are they in Pakistan? That's marketing. Get your target market. Know exactly where they are. Know when they're online. Know what they eat. Know how much they're willing to spend. Now you need to know what channels to go on. So if your customer is always on Instagram and you're advertising on Facebook, you're not going to see them. If that, <laughs> that's the truth. You know, if you, um, we have loads of people nowadays. That was that, a good one. <laughs> a lot of people will go for digital marketing, which is good. Which, which is exactly to your point because I was talking to to, to a guy, and, yeah. and this gentleman is is very financially he's set and he's yeah. got multiple businesses and he's not like I don't understand this whole social media of Facebook and Instagram, and you know I don't know so I feel like there was a resistance there but I was like most of your clients and audiences are there yeah. I don't care if you understand or not you better go learn it. Because that's where most of your eyeballs are there. That's what, like, it, it's that's not about you liking it or not liking yeah. it. That's where everyone's going to be. Because the thing is, that's marketing. That's you then saying, like, look, I know that we have a very, like, for example, um, there's a company I know. 
I will not say for GDPR reasons, so <laughs> we'll maintain that, um, you know, mystery. But they're very proactive on LinkedIn, very, very proactive. They have loads of followers. They have loads of people engaging with that content. But the problem is the people who are engaging with them are people who refer them. They think they're the best company in the world. But the customers aren't on LinkedIn. The customers are on Twitter. So now the problem is you're posting all your LinkedIn messages and everyone's going to agree with you. Yes, I think this is a very good idea. I think this is going to work, but no one's buying. Why? Because the people that will buy are not there. They're on Twitter. And the thing is, if you don't know exactly where they are, what tends to happen is you have loads of companies who get to Twitter and they decide to go with this, um, would you say, very professional approach. So let's say we're talking about um, hot tops, right? Now, if you're doing hot tubs, you're on Twitter. People on Twitter are fickle. It's a very fickle environment. You, if you don't know how to handle criticism, you should not be there. Instagram works well for you because on Instagram, you can just post a picture of a hot tub and disappear. Everyone's going to say, I think this is nice. On Twitter, you need to give people a reason. So if you're just posting your pictures on Twitter, no one's going to engage with it. That's the thing. So you need to know how people on that platform work. So you can't go into Instagram and be typing long comments because no one wants to read it. I just want to see the picture. That's it. On Twitter, I want to see a conversation. Facebook, that's where you can begin to post people towards your chat and say, okay, look, do you want to talk about it? Do you, do you want to know more? But that's marketing. You kind of need to understand exactly where your people are. So what I'm hearing you from you is that you got to study your craft. You have to study your craft. You must. That's because like, if you like, don't. Without going into the details of the tactical part, but that's where I see like a lot of entrepreneurs. And this is what I was talking about in one of my other videos with another yeah. coach. I was like, you got to go on YouTube. You got to learn the basics or get a mentor, get a coach, buy a course, yeah. whatever you want to do. But go learn the craft. If you don't learn it and you're just throwing darts in the dark, it may not get there. That's, that's where all of us are now because... Um, I mean, the internet is a very fast-paced period right now. Everyone's on the internet. Everyone's saying that I can do this the best. A lot of people, some people have a lot of money to do um, a lot of SEO and push their Google ads, which is good. But the problem is, if I was to log into, if I go onto Google and I'm searching for um, durable Timberland or durable boots, and I see your website first, now, naturally, by habit, I'm going to click. But now the problem is, after I click, if I don't see something that makes me worth going through your website, I'm going to leave. So we have a lot of people who have the, would you say the expertise or the know-how on how to market. But that's why the brand part is important because if I eventually come in front of you and then the amount of quality you're offering me is not because everyone, every single person, no one's going to market and say, we're, at, we're not so good, but you should still buy. No one's going to buy from you. You have to then say, I'm the best. I have the best quality. But then when I come in front of you, if you don't have the best quality, that's a problem. So you need to perfect your craft. It's essential. Even if it's not, um, if you want to go and fight against someone like um, Apple and you're creating a phone now, you know they already have a lot of things there. So maybe you're the first person who decides to say, look, our phone is, um, it's fireproof. You can use it for soccer. You can play football with it. You can play basketball with it. It's very absurd. But if you focus on that and perfect it, Apple can do that. That's fine. But then when you say something like, oh, we have the best phone. Now, I'm an Apple user. Sorry to Sam, Samsung and Android, but <laughs> I'm totally a Samsung guy. I totally <laughs> passionately don't like iPhones. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle. You know, um, I can use both, but I like my iPhone. So for me, if you using my iPhone, if you then tell me like, oh, I'm making the best phone ever. I'm not going to ask you what the features are. I'm just going to have a certain expectation. I'm going to think, okay, it probably is touchscreen. It probably has an app store. I can send messages. I can play games. Now, maybe to you, your concept of the best is it has a very long battery life. Now, the thing is, if I come and buy your phone and then the battery life is just about maybe, say, an hour ahead, just maybe if Apple does 13 hours, you do 14. There's not a significant difference, but then everything else is poor. So there's no point. But then if you tell me, like, look, Apple does 13 hours, but um, we do 45, then I'll buy it, like, for example, this watch, this is a Garmin watch. I wanted a smart watch. So went into the website, searched for everything. I saw an Apple watch. It was expensive. It was 450 pounds. It had everything. Oh, you can answer your text messages. You can reply. You can make calls. You can run on the, you know, with music, which sounded good. But it was 450 pounds. 
this watch, you can answer texts, you can get notifications, you can do certain things regarding fitness, which was enough for me. But then the key point there was it said the battery life lasts for seven days compared to 24 hours. That is a huge jump. So that's what made me push. So there has to be something about you that is significantly. You got to have the edge. You got to have the edge. edge. It's not, there's nothing. If, you're, if your edge is just slightly above, like a day, it's not enough. I need something that huge that when I see, I'm just like, yeah, I'm definitely not buying this. And I'm going to the other side. So th that's about it. Yeah, you need, to, you need to perfect your craft. If you don't, what's going to happen is you might have the expertise or the money to get people in front of you. But by the time I, even if I purchase from you that first time, once I see that the quality is lacking, I am definitely not coming back. So you can't have loyalty anymore. So let me ask you another question. What is your, like, what are the, some of the rules that we need to go by for, for work ethic and, and entrepreneurship? Because I feel like because we don't have set hours, yeah. some of us, we call ourselves entrepreneurs, but we're working on our craft a few hours a day. And, yeah. you know, we might be making enough money where we don't need to be hustling more. But yeah. what are some of the tips that you could share with us there? Well, I'll say you could, do, you could do two approaches. I think the first thing you need to decide is that you're going to make the best of your life. That's the first thing. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but when you, do, um, when you work, the problem is you have some people who work too hard to the point whereby they become sick or they neglect everything else around them. And then you have the other side, which is a lot of people as well, who want to do something, but don't put too much energy into it. It's just kind of like, um, I'll just do two hours and that's it. So you need to define a balance. See, I want to make the best of my life, but you need to see what everyone else is doing around you. That's one. Two, you need to find a way to do it smarter because you don't want to be working eight hours when everyone else is working eight hours. That's one thing people don't realize. If you look at the stock exchange market, you see people who are at work from 8 a.m. to like maybe about 10 p.m. and they go to sleep and they're up again by four. Now, the thing is, you're repeating this seven times a day. So you are making enough money, which is good. But then the quality of your own life, it's lacking. So there's no point in you making all the money if you're going to die and not going to spend it. No sense. But at the same time, you need to make enough money so that if anything was to happen, you can buy the things you want to buy in life. So I'll say it's a fine balance. Knowing exactly, one, you want to make the best of your life. Two, you need to make sure that you divide time between work and play. So if you know that... Um, you work seven hours a day. You need to dedicate. But you're, not, you're not saying create a balance because I don't agree with balance. But do you agree with that balance? I, I agree with balance because um, I used to be that person who would work so many hours. And it was fine at first. But then I found out that I was neglecting family. I was neglecting friends. So I then decided like, okay, I could do one of two things. I could decide to just cut short on um, the work and spend more time with family. But then obviously if you do that, you're lacking in terms of finance, money. So I decided, okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we find a way to work smarter? So working smarter for me meant basically if someone is up at um, 5 a.m., for example, from 5 a.m. to 7, working on their website, sending emails and everything, then it was my job at 5 a.m. to wake up, but then find a way to make that email automated. So the amount of time spent equaling actually the output is different. So for him, he's going to spend two hours sending emails, and he's probably sent about five. Meanwhile, I woke up at five, I've sent automated emails about 100 people, and I've only spent 30 minutes. So now I have two more hours to do what I want to do. So even if, if you guys work at the same time length, you have done more work than him. So it's that the balance for me is important. So you find if you want to make a balance, you need to find a way to do it smarter. If you don't want a balance, then you need to make sure that you're dedicated to whatever you want to do. If you don't think you can work smarter, then it is your job to wake up and hustle and grind as much as you can. But if you can find a way to do it smarter, which is where the internet is going nowadays, because for things like um, blogging and so many other things, um, it works. But then it also works if you know exactly what keywords to use, that's working smarter. Instead of you having to write about 50, 100 articles, then you could just decide to write two, but then use the right keywords and get people to meet you. So it's a balance, you know, choose one. If you want to work smarter, then you need to make sure you find that way that works smarter. But if you can't find it, then it's your job to keep pushing forward and doing as much as you can to make sure that you achieve that um, level of, you say, finance, money, um, success that you want, quality of life, whatever the case is, in your environment. Because I'm speaking from the UK. In a place like Nigeria, where I'm from, it's very different. Different facilities in place. Um, so certain places you yeah, have... Yeah, well, you live in LA, if you're not making... I mean, in my neighborhood, if you don't yeah. make 
150,000 to 200,000, like that's the minimum. If you don't make that, you're like broke. Get out. And, you know, the, the environment is going to force you out. Now, yeah, you yeah, want to stay definitely not find a bit too small. Where you, right. But if you go, you move up to the suburbs and you yeah. go down, you know, you drive about another 45 minutes or an hour from here. Yeah. With 50,000 a year, you're good. You're good. 50,000, yeah. you're good. So there's a difference. Yeah. So when you say balance, I also think we got to bring into the equation of where you at, what status. Yeah, what I think that, that's, that's a key thing, yeah, because here in the UK, the way it works is you have a lot of... Um, the difference between, the, between America and the UK is America is quite capitalist, heavily capitalist. Um, the UK has a lot of things in place to kind of curb that. So it's still a capitalist country, but there's certain infrastructure in place. Obviously, if, you, if I was to leave the UK and go to, say, Florida, or, you know, LA or New York, you'd have to carry a different work mentality because it's not the same thing compared to back home. If I go yeah, back man, home, you guys Nigeria, chill too much. Different. You guys chill too much. You don't be chilling. <laughs> well, you don't yeah, be chilling. I think that's, that's why, you know, that's why I could talk about balance because for me, you know, it's, um, the UK is a place whereby you need to find that balance because if you don't, there's so many other things that are going to get rid of your uh, mental health. You need to make sure that um, as you make your money, you are okay. But again, I'm from Nigeria, so... You don't in Nigeria. You have to, you have to hustle. You have to grind. You have to find a way to do it smart. You have to do all three. So again, like we mentioned, environments. Depending on where you are, if you know that you're in an environment that doesn't, you say, provide enough support to you, then you need to make sure that you you solidify yourself all around. You know that every aspect of yourself is solid. If you find a place that is supporting you to a good extent then your job is to take advantage of that support, but also build yourself. So that's the balance there. So, because if you decide to go against the grain and decide, I, I'm going to do it just by myself. Again, here, you have a lot of places whereby people who were able to, in the past, grow wealth to a significant degree, they're fine. Now, because they're trying to balance everything, there's so many places, like for example, in some places, if you want to buy a house, they will tell that you can't buy the house. You can't buy two houses in a row. You can't do that. No matter how much money you have, they will just tell you no. So that's the way the system is. So once you find a place, know the environment you're kind of in, and then from there, you know, you decide what you need to do. But obviously, working harder is never bad. You just need to make sure you don't do it to the point you die. <laughs> that's the key thing. <laughs> I that's agree with that 100%. Thing. Don't work, work yourself to death because then there's nothing, you're not going to be here to enjoy it. Listen, exactly. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule of being with us this morning. Hopefully, we could do more videos. I appreciate you being here from UK. And if you ever visit LA, let us know. We're in town. <laughs> we will do. I actually plan to come this year, though. But, well, it's what's going on. Well, whenever uh, this uh, whole entire thing is done, it's whenever done, it's yeah. done, let us know. We could do some live videos, actual live that videos. That would not be a problem. I appreciate that. You got it, brother. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>